Lieutenant Kelsey with Savannah Fire EMS. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, hose advancement, uh, utilizing the nozzle forward concept today, as well as hose deployment and getting set up for success in the front yard. So the first topic we're going to discuss is actually deploying the hose line. Um, everyone's going to have their, their department specific deployments, but today we're going to discuss actually the size up first. So um, initially what we have here is we've got a single story, I'm sorry, a two story structure. Um, we're going to pretend like there's fire kind of in the middle of the house here. And what we've done is our nozzle man has pulled the hose past the front door at a 45 degree angle. Um, and this keeps the front of the door clear for the backup lines to come in so the hose lines aren't fighting each other. Um, again, this is, this is more of a size up step, the initial step that we're going to be discussing here. Um, this is not the 360 size up that the officer should be doing um, upon arrival. This is more for the nozzleman who's pulling the hose line. Um, so just to touch on that again, we're going to keep the front of the door, directly in front of the door, open for a primary line and a backup line. It's up to the nozzleman on that first due engine to decide if pulling past the door or coming short of the door is the ideal spot. Um, what, we're, what our goal is, is to make that pull easy for that primary line and then the backup line, whoever gets here next, uh, can set up either past the door or short of the door, opposite of where that primary line went. So we'll walk up here and we'll kind of discuss that a little bit more. All right, here's the, the demonstration of, of our hose pull here. Um, our nozzleman chose to go past the door to the far side. He's set up at a 45 degree angle. Again, we're leaving the entire front area of the door here completely clear. That way our backup line can come in at a 45 here. Again, leaving this entire center area open so the hose lines aren't fighting each other on the advance inside. Alright everyone, so this is again called the nozzle forward concept. I am not the creator of this by any means. Um, this is the brainchild of Aaron Fields from Seattle Fire. Um, and this is just an attack that I've been taught on in some of the classes I've been to. And it has pretty much adopted it for, for every movement that I've done, either in search or hose advancement. So um, we'll get down to the nitty gritty here. Um, traditionally, we're taught to get low when we're inside and to crawl. So if I'm in full PPE, air pack, everything, when I go forward like this to crawl, the brim of my helmet is going to be hitting my air tank, right? So my field of vision is directly down onto the floor. That's really not good for what we do because we're tunnel visioned right into everything directly in front of us. We're not open to everything around us. So what this positioning does is it still keeps you low, but it kind of tips you back and keeps your weight back. The other thing this does is now my weight is back here, so if I do find a hole that's in front of me, I'm only feeling it with my foot or a tool before my whole momentum from being forward like this makes me go forward down into the hole. So again, it's simply just resting back like this, using your, your rear hand for support, and you're gonna be doing this. Okay, see it from this side too. Digging in with your heel to help you move forward, but again, you're using your back hand as support and you're keeping your weight back. This movement can be used for search and rescue. As you just saw, I don't have a hose line, but I can get off the wall, I can search all the way around and have a wider area of search. And this same positioning that you'll see here in just a minute will be used for the hose advancement. Hose will come up and I'm doing the same exact movement to get around and to advance that hose line. Next step, we're gonna incorporate the hose line uh, with the body mechanics that we just learned. So again, instead of being forward on our knees, we're gonna be sitting back on our back heel. And mind you, this can be right or left, whatever's comfortable for you. But your front foot is out, you're resting on your back heel, and all your weight is back to make that move. So incorporating the hose line, this can be done with a fog nozzle, smooth bore, anything like that. Um, essentially, there's going to be two separate uh, setups for this, two different variations. Um, we'll start with the first one. 
nozzle's going to be out in front of you to a point where all you can reach is that bail. We are not worried about the pistol grip at all. We're going to be using the hose line how it's supposed to be. Bail in front of you, and you're sitting back, and you're going to use the whip motion, making your O patterns, T patterns, N patterns, whatever letter patterns you want. Uh, but the focus is using the reach and the penetration of that stream to put the fire out prior to you getting there. Before moving, we're going to sweep the floor um, to get any hot debris or anything like that out of the way. Um, but here's the movement itself. For me, my right side is, is how it's comfortable for me. You're going to have the hose line right on your hip. Nozzle's out in front of you. My right hand is going to be underneath the hose line doing the motion, right? Doing my O patterns. When it's time to move, I'm taking my left arm, hugging the nozzle, and coming back, which is the movement we just discussed. And when I move forward, you can see the nozzle comes down and then up, right? So the focus on this is once you start flowing water inside the structure, obviously it's a hot environment, it's a toxic environment, we don't ever want to shut the bale completely. We don't want to stop flowing water. Um, when you go to move, it's a half bale. If you notice when I moved how the nozzle came up, if we have it half bale and are still flowing a little bit of water, it's going to maintain a cool environment around that nozzleman. Now it's going up like that. All right, so this, this positioning also allows you, as you're moving, if there's objects in front of you, to kind of get off the line a little bit and be able to move, move around. We're still, we're still moving, we're still getting that nozzle in the air, and as soon as you need to stop, get that nozzle out in front of you and do your patterns. Again, weight is back, you're not forward, your field of vision is everywhere in front of you, you can look up and down all around. All right, version two, um, we're actually gonna use our ankle and hook the hose. This is really good for like a straight hallway, say we're in an apartment complex, college dorm, something like that, where we've got a straight run. There's really not a whole lot of obstacles in the way. If you hook, same, same kind of positioning, but instead I've hooked my back ankle on the hose line. And as you move forward, if you can come around here, Pat. When you bring that leg up, your ankle that's locked is actually, your, your leg movement is gonna help advance that hose line. So same, same concept, you're still sitting back, you're using the hose line, to your advantage, you reach and penetration, and when it's time to move, you're locking in again. Using that lock to advance forward, stop, weight back, and you're doing your patterns. We're gonna focus on the backup guy. Um, the nozzleman, he's already deployed the hose, he's going to start making it in advance. The backup guy's role um, is to essentially back up the nozzleman. Um, traditionally, we have been taught to be right up on the nozzleman. That's not the case with this, with this uh, technique. So my job is to make sure that he has enough hose line to be able to advance. Um, if we're only going to advance in small increments because we are using the reach and the penetration of that stream to our advantage. We're not going to be right in that fire room putting out the fire. We can be putting water on it from a distance away. Again, using the hose line and the reach and penetration of that stream to our advantage. So as the backup guy, if Aaron's going to go ahead and advance in, it's my job. Again, we've got the first coupling here. It's my job as he goes in. Go ahead and stop, Aaron. So he's He's advancing in the doorway. He's using the reach and penetration of that stream to his advantage. My job, when he stops, is to make sure that he has enough hose line to be able to advance next. So as he's flowing, I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding line. Go ahead and stop here. So at this point, we can see, Cap, if you wanna come in. He can't pull anymore. He's at a straight line. So my goal is to make his ability to advance in, go ahead and stop Aaron, just there, there. More accessible. So I've got line outside, I've now moved in. Again, I'm not right up on Aaron. I'm back a little bit, I can see what he's doing. I'm gonna start feeding some hose in. 
our goal is to make a nice S pattern for them. So this is giving them roughly five, six, maybe seven, eight feet that he can advance now. If I can't physically see him, I know he's on the end of the line. Go ahead and advance, Aaron. I can watch this hose line start to pull away from me, right? So I know how far he is. Now, I make that S pattern for him again, and he can advance in more. Once I know he's set to where he needs to be, I can start moving up the line. We've got a pretty decent amount of slack here. I can move up. And now I'm at the next corner so he can advance into the next room. Same exact thing. He's gonna use the reach and penetration of that stream. And I can feed him hose. The one thing that the backup guy needs to understand is when your nozzle man starts to flow water, there's gonna be a lot of back pressure that comes through that line. If you don't wanna lose your progress coming in, basically the, the uh, tactic is called the stop and pin. So when I know that he stopped and he's about to open the bale fully, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pin that line to the floor, all right? This is gonna stop the back pressure and take all that pressure off of him when he goes to open that line. The goal of that backup guy is to make sure that the nozzleman has an easy time directing the water onto the seat of the fire and making that advance as easy as possible for him. So again, you're gonna stop, you're gonna pin. When you know that he's ready to move forward again, either through communication or you feel that line start to get bailed back a little bit, now you can get up and you can start feeding him more line. One of the tricks that we can do is put the line on your back foot that raises it up off the floor so when you take pressure off that line it automatically comes off the floor a little bit and you're able to grab it a lot easier than trying to pick up a hose line off a wet carpet with wet gloves just makes that a little bit easier. Now we're going to discuss another option to the stop and pin where we're actually going to be using uh, the building to our advantage. So what Aaron's going to do is he's going to advance in just like the last time and myself as the backup guy, I will be feeding hose in and in addition to the stop and pin, we're actually going to make nice uh, wide S curves with the hose line. It's going to do two things. It's going to stop it from kinking and the second thing is it's going to allow Aaron to advance you know that that five six seven feet whatever whatever it is so we're going to show that to you next again we're going to be using the building to our advantage so as aaron advances in not too fast Aaron. so aaron has now stopped his advance he's going to be utilizing the reach and penetration of that host the host stream i'm going to be coming up and as you can see we've got a wide S here, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more pronounced. So again, we're gonna be using the building to our advantage. I'm gonna tuck that hose line right into the back of this wall. What that does is when he opens the line, the back pressure is gonna feed back through the hose and it's gonna go right into the wall. I Again, I'm gonna stop and pin right here. I know that the pressure is gonna go right back into the wall. If I see that S start coming this way, I then can feed more line in and help with the advance. This demonstration, um, we're gonna simulate that the fire is actually on the right side of the structure versus the left that we've done in the past. Um, if you remember, we set up, we pulled the hose line to the far side of the door because we knew we were actually gonna be coming back to the left. This one, again, we're gonna simulate that it's to the right. This would be a good opportunity to pull short of the door versus going on the far side. Again, staying at that 45 degree angle to keep the front of the door open for that backup line now to go to the far side. Um, so with this demonstration, we're going to the right. We're gonna show just the opposite way of what we just did. Aaron's gonna advance in to the right to where the seat of the fire is suspected. And I will show you the exact opposite of what we did over here where we used the actual structure um, for our advantage. We're gonna use you know, the TV stand in a couch, something that are obstructing the walls, but still a solid piece of furniture um, to be able to brace that back pressure against for that hose line when he decides to open it up. So go ahead, Aaron. So Aaron's gonna advance in. Go ahead and stop, Aaron. So he's gonna stop, he's gonna open that line up, 
and my job as a backup guy is to feed that hose line in. So we've got a nice S. He's going to start advancing a little bit more. The hose line is now coming off of our structure here. And again, I'm feeding it in, maintaining that wide S curve. When he's ready, I can advance up that hose line and assist him in any way I can. Again, staying low, using that same movement. And now I can come up to the next pinch point here as he advances into the bedroom. He's now in the bedroom. He's making his left turn towards the bathroom where the seat of the fire is. I know I can move up now because now we have another pinch point. And if there was furniture in here, I can do the exact same thing with the advance of the hose. I'm making sure there's the wide S patterns and I'm going to brace against any furniture or anything like that. If there's nothing in here, it's the stopping pin. Lean back, put all my weight on the hose line so as he opens that nozzle up, the back pressure is not going to shoot the hose out towards the front door where we just came. It's all going to stay here. Our progress is going to be maintained and he can now finish his uh, mop up of the fire in the bathroom. So in summary, we've discussed hose advancement um, from, the, from the engine all the way through the house um, using the nozzle forward concept. Uh, we've discussed setting up um, the hose lines either past the door or short of the door at a 45 degree angle, leaving the center of the door open um, for the advancement so the hoses don't fight each other uh, when they're getting pulled in. Uh, body mechanics, again, we're not, we're not forward crawling like a lot of us have been taught. It's getting down opening up your field of view and keeping your weight back so you don't fall through a hole that you may find and it, it opens everything up and it's a, a pretty easy um, advancement hose movement and search wise can be used both ways um, again that backup guy is making it easy for the nozzleman um, the snap and pin that we discussed making it so that back pressure doesn't doesn't come back and, and basically move that nozzle backwards as he opens up the bale. Um, secondly, size up initially, depending on what side of the house or the structure the fire is, will dictate whether that nozzle may close past the door to the far side or comes up short. In reference, if we're gonna go to the right, it's easier to stop short at that 45 to be able to make that advance to the right end a lot easier. If it were going to the left on that size up, we're gonna pull past and then come back towards the left. This is Lieutenant Ian Kelsey, Sylvania Fire EMS. Hope you guys uh, are able to, to utilize this, this uh, technique uh, for your toolbox. Again, this isn't the only way that it can be done, but it, it, it can assist you um, in, your, in your future advancements. Stay safe.